Hey guys, it is finally that time of year again where we are beginning our coverage of Big Brother 26 with a preseason power ranking. Now at the time of recording, Monday, July 15th, we have the preseason material for 16 of the 17 house guests. Now obviously there is a 17th house guest that we probably will not know about until the actual premiere. So for the sake of this video, I will only be talking about the 16 players that we do have information on. And for the most part, this is a pretty standard cast, nothing too spectacular. And while it was fun listening to some of the interviews, I feel like for the most part, this cast is pretty baseline for Modern Big Brother, but that's what we're dealing with here. Now in this video, I'll be ranking these players based on how likely they are to win the game based off my first impressions of them, which considering that I'm recording this video just a couple of hours after the cast reveal, and considering we have very limited information about how these people play the game, take all this with a grain of salt as it's pretty likely that my view on some of these players will be radically different this time next week, but that's just what we're dealing with here. But we have 16 players to talk about and it's wasting more time. Let's go into the video. So starting off at number 16, the player I believe is the least likely to win based off the information we currently have is Lisa. And Lisa was a pretty interesting prospect here. She's 33 years old and a celebrity chef. And I feel like Lisa comes off as the least knowledgeable about the actual show where she does say some things like want to play a dynamic game and how she wants to manipulate people, but then she also says she doesn't want to manipulate people and that she doesn't plan to be a backstabber. So I feel like she was giving kind of contradictory answers here, but I feel like beyond that, she definitely reminds me a lot of Bowie Jane from last season, someone who will try to play the game a bit interestingly, but will probably like rely a lot on her allies as someone who will be a hard worker and be trustworthy and stuff. And I feel like with her, like not really coming off as that big of a gamer, I don't really have that much confidence in Lisa coming into this. I could see her being a bit of an outsider initially, though if she's able to scrape on by, she could potentially build some bonds, but I just don't really see her making that many big moves across the season. And I feel like Bowie Jane seems like a pretty apt comparison for me. Now again, this is just the preseason. Things can be completely different once the game actually starts. But I feel like based off the information we currently have, I feel like Lisa's the person I feel the least confident about at this point, which is why she's here number 16. Now moving on to number 15, and we have someone who's kind of the opposite of Lisa, but is still someone that I'm kind of worried about coming into it, and that is Brooklyn. Now I will say that Brooklyn has definitely more upside compared to certain other players we'll be talking about soon, as she seems to be a pretty big fan of the show, someone who is definitely going to play a very aggressive game and someone who will be more willing to make big moves compared to Lisa. However, at the same time, I also worry that she could rub some people off the wrong way early on, where she admits herself that she's a control freak and a type A personality, and I just worry that she could come off as a bit too intense for certain people, which could definitely lead to her being targeted early on. Now, admittedly, I kind of hope that she doesn't, and I hope that she is given more of a shake here, but I feel like just based off the interviews here, I could very well see Brooklyn being someone who gets too far out in front early on, someone that kind of flames out. And while I would have a bit more faith in Brooklyn to get out of sticky situations, considering her knowledge of the game, I feel like she's more likely to be targeted early on due to her personality and due to her being seen as someone who isn't laying as low compared to other people. She kind of reminds me a bit of Maddie from Survivor 44 in that sense. So while I do like Brooklyn and she definitely comes off as an interesting personality, I also worry about her prospects early on, which is why she's here at number 15. Now moving on to number 14, and we have someone I'm a bit more conflicted on, someone who I can very well see going either way, but we do have Angela, who is one of the older people in the cast being 50 years old. And I feel like Angela's a bit of an interesting player here, someone who, while she doesn't come off as this big super fan, is someone who has been watching the show for a while, and now that her kids are grown up, she kind of wants to move on to the next stage of her life, and is someone that wants to have this experience. And while I do admire that, and I feel like she could definitely be pretty likable to a lot of people, I'm also not getting the sense that she's the most strategic player in the world, and I can very well see her being one of the more emotional players on the cast, where she talks about how she wears her heart on her sleeve, she has a big mouth, and that she's prone to being pretty blunt. I could see her getting to confrontations with certain people, and obviously with her being an older woman, I can very well see her being like this easy person to put up on the block more times than not. Though I will also say that she's not guaranteed to be an early boot, despite her being an older person, considering there are people in the cast that openly talk about wanting to work with the older people, people like Cam, for instance, people like Matt, for instance. 
I can very well see those people wanting to work with people like Angela and Kenny in order to get her deeper into the game because of that. But at the same time, I'm just not seeing that much strategy within her. And while I would have more faith in her to pull the trigger compared to Lisa, I just don't see her as a very likely winner coming into it. Now again, obviously we'll have to see how the season plays out, but I feel like just based off first impressions, based off what she was giving me in terms of what she knows about the game, I do have to leave her here at number 14. Now moving on to number 13, and we actually have the other older person on this cast, and that is Kenny, who was the oldest person on this cast at 52, and I feel like Kenny gave me more in terms of his thoughts on the game, where he got into the show during BB-16, and how he was inspired by Derek, and kind of wants to play a similar game. He talks about how his wife is a massive super fan, and how he kind of got with her by watching the show and kind of impressing her because of that. And I feel like Kenny definitely gives a lot of the right answers in his talks where he talks about wanting to take it week by week, how he wants to be in the middle of the pack, not really stand out too much, but then it'll come out later. And I definitely have more faith in Kenny in order to integrate well and to navigate around the dynamics within the game. Where again, considering people like Cam and Matt seem pretty open to wanting to work with the older people, I could very well see Kenny fitting in within the majority of the line to cut to that. But at the end of the day, he is still an older person on this cast, which could make things more difficult for him in terms of connecting with people outside of his alliance. He could also just be this very easy person to put up on the block early on to where I could see him being like a Steve from BB20 or Kevin from BB19. Now again, I feel like if he's able to get past those early rounds, he could definitely be an effective player within the game. But I think another thing they bring up is comp ability. How well will he actually do in comps considering he is an older player? No, I would expect that as a former cop that he would have some physical ability within him, but I feel like when he's going up against plenty of other younger competition, that could definitely be a challenge for him and just how effective he'll be in terms of actually being out in front within the game. I think that'll definitely be a major concern for me as well, whether he'll be someone who's driving a lot of the strategy or someone who is just a number for the majority of lines if he's able to get to that point. So again, I still have the same concerns that I have with Angela, but I feel like with him being more strategically minded compared to Angela, I do have him here at number 13. Now moving on to number 12, and we have someone who I actually want to do pretty well, but I feel like just based off their interviews, they kind of come off as high variance to me, and that is Joseph. And I really like Joseph. He is a massive super fan. He's been watching these shows for most of his life. He is someone who is pretty fun loving and someone who I think will be pretty laid back in how he deals with people. Though at the same time, I could also see him struggling with certain groups of people. I could definitely see him being used as a pretty easy pawn early on, someone that could potentially be targeted. But I feel like if he's able to get past that, he could definitely do pretty well. I mean, he talks about wanting to model his game after Dan from BB10. I think that's definitely a strategy that could work pretty well for him. And I feel like he's, if he's able to be like this calming presence and someone that people just trust. I can very well see that working to his favor, but I just feel like coming into it, he's someone who may not connect well with all people and someone who could just be seen as his easy target early on. That and also I'm not entirely sure about his comp ability. So while Joseph is someone I definitely wanted to put higher and someone who I think could have potential if he's able to get his footing in the game, I feel like for now I do have to leave him behind at number 12. Now moving on to number 11 and we have another person who I could very easily see going either way and that is Kimo who is the first native Hawaiian to be on Big Brother which is pretty exciting. And it's kind of similar to Joseph, he is a massive super fan, someone who understands the game, and I feel like he gives a lot of good answers in terms of his actual responses. Though I think my problem with Kimo is that he's definitely very high energy across his interview, and while that could just be for the actual interview, I could also see him being someone that could come off as like a heisome figure, someone who is definitely out in front early on, someone that could play a bit messily, and someone who's a bit over eager to play the game. So I definitely worry about that when it comes to Kimo, but he is someone who I did enjoy listening to his interview. He definitely is a pretty fun personality. And I feel like he's someone who knows the game well enough to where if he is in a good position early on, that he'll be able to be able to ride that out pretty well. But I feel like just on the face of it, I could see him being in some danger early on, which is why he's here at number 11. Now moving on to number 10, and honestly this person has less upside compared to Joseph or Kimo, but I feel like they're a bit more likely to get through the early rounds than them, and that is Leah. And Leah screams out to me as a recruit here, where she admits herself that she's not that big of a fan of the show, where really her mom and sister are the bigger fans in her family. She also says that she's going to win this season because she's 26 years old and 26 is her lucky number, which is kind of a silly answer, but now she does talk a bit about leaning to her social game, how she adapts well and gets along with different types of people, and that she's going to 
base your strategy around the people inside the house, which are okay enough answers. But then she also says that she wants to prove that you don't have to be super conniving to win the game, which makes me think that she's not going to play that that hard and that she's not going to be that cutthroat, which is kind of a worry there. And I feel like just listening to her speech, she comes off as pretty low energy as well. So I'm not entirely sure how well she's going to connect with certain people in the house, though. Again, it's just the interview. So who knows? And while there's a world where she could be an early boot, I think she's more likely than not going to be in the majority alliance and just be kind of dragged throughout a lot of the game, not really doing much and not really having much win equity by the end of it. So I'm not feeling that great about Leah. The reason I have her above Joseph and Chemo is that I feel like she's less likely to be an early boot compared to those two, but I'm still not feeling great about her, which is why she's here at number 10. Now moving on to number nine, and we have another person who probably has a lower ceiling than certain other people we talked about, but probably has a higher floor, and that is Cedric, who is the youngest person in this cast at just 21 years old. And Cedric's definitely a likable figure here, someone that talks a lot about his family, someone who is very charismatic across his interview. And they're definitely someone who has potential to pick up the game as they go along, but I feel like right now, he comes off as someone that kind of lacks life experience, someone that doesn't exactly know what he's getting into. Where he talks about his strategy coming in is to be the most observant, which is definitely a fine strategy, but he doesn't get into how he's going to build alliances or really do much. He talks about how he's going to take it week by week, which is not a bad approach to have, but considering we don't know how much of a fan he is and how much he knows about the game, I definitely worry that it could cause him to not play the game as hard compared to others. And I feel like an apt comparison here is Joseph from PB24, someone who was also pretty charismatic, someone that was a bit on the younger side as well, and someone that kind of picked up the game as they went along. I feel like Cedric could definitely have that upside if he's able to learn as we go along, but I feel like just based off the information we currently have, he definitely comes off as someone that could just easily be picked up as a number for the majority of lines, someone who is seen as pretty physical, someone who is pretty able to win comps, and is just able to ride that wave for a lot of it, while not really setting himself up as well to advance well deeper into the game and could potentially be outplayed by certain other people. So I definitely see Cedric as someone who is a bit too young to do well within the game, but someone who will definitely be taken pretty deep considering his archetype and considering that he does seem pretty likable. But I feel like with the lack of upside there, at least right now at least, I do have to leave him here at number 9. Now moving on to number 8, and this person's kind of a fusion between Joseph and Leah, but we do have Mackenzie. And Mackenzie is also a bit on the younger side here, just 22 years old. She admits herself that she's not much of a super fan and that she just got into the show recently, which is kind of a red flag here. But she also talks about how she's a triple threat, how she plans to approach the game. And I do feel like she articulates her game a bit better than Cedric here, which is part of the reason why I have her above Cedric, even though I feel like Cedric probably has more potential to move up on this list in the future, as I feel like Cedric could potentially learn the game as it goes along. I'm not entirely convinced that's the case with Mackenzie here, but I feel like just like Cedric, she'll probably be in the majority alliance early on. I feel like she's also a bit more likely to end up in a showmance compared to other people here, which could be a positive in the sense that it gives her more options in the game, gives her more information, but it could also be a drawback as it causes her to lay back and not play the game as much, which is not great. So I'm kind of conflicted over Mackenzie here, where there are some things that I like about her, where she talks about how her plans to lay low and how she is going to like play into people's perceptions of her as a sweet innocent lady but i feel like there are just as many things holding her back here where she compares herself to casey someone who she describes as having helped to her alliance in the game then also with her not being as big of a fan compared to other people i do have to leave her behind here at number eight now moving on to number seven and i did consider a little bit where to put this person i consider putting them a little lower i consider putting them a little higher but number seven i did decide to go with rubina and Rubina is an interesting prospect here. Now, I think one of the negatives is that she says herself that she's not much of a super fan, but at the same time, she's a bartender, which is a pretty social job. She is also 35 years old, so she has a bit more life experience compared to people like Cedric or Mackenzie. She also talks about wanting to represent the Filipino community. She talks about how she wants to bring big cis energy into the house. So I think there's definitely plenty of things to like with Rubina here. I feel like she'll be pretty decent enough socially I do question strategically, though, how much she really knows about the game. And I feel like that was a major factor in why she isn't higher on the list. So I feel like for those reasons, I do have her here at number seven. Now moving on to number six, and we have another person who I really like and consider putting her higher, actually. But I feel like I do question how much she really knows about the game, and that is Decor. 
And Takor is a pretty interesting prospect here where she definitely comes off as pretty likable. And I feel like she'll definitely be an interesting player here where she definitely talks a lot about putting herself into situations where she's taking risks, how she had a rough upbringing, how she has her degree in sociology. And again, there's a lot to like here. I feel like she's definitely coming into this with some interesting life experiences here, despite her being a bit on the younger side. Now, she does talk about how she's a bit awkward and nutty, but is also persistent and ambitious. I think there's definitely an interesting character within Decor. I'm just not entirely sure what she's going to bring in terms of a player where she doesn't really talk that that much about how big of a fan she is. And while we definitely know bits about her strategy, like how she plans to learn about different alliances and how she wants to build the squad of misfits, I also feel like she could be like this big threat later on in the game that people eventually snipe out. So I definitely do worry a bit about that when it comes to decor, but I feel like coming into it, she definitely reminds me a lot of Koozie from BB Can 11. I could definitely see her connecting with a decent chunk of the house and ending up in a good position early on. It's just a question of whether she has it in her to get towards the very, very end. And I'm not entirely convinced that's the case. So I feel like for those reasons, I do have to leave her behind at number six. Now moving on to number five, and this was definitely one of the more interesting prospects to consider here. I was all over the place with this person, but at number five, we do have Quinn. And Quinn is such an interesting prospect here where I feel like they could go one of two ways. Where on one hand, they could be like, like a chemo style figure, someone who is very hyper energy early on, someone that definitely wants to play the game and kind of flames up because of that, or they have it within them to hold it back early on and be able to be pretty under the radar until they're able to turn it on. And I feel like through that, it's kind of hard to really gauge where Quinn stands, where I feel like it's hard to really assess how people are going to perceive him once he's in the house. Now, if we are looking at him on paper, he's definitely a very capable player. He's someone who understands the game. He's a massive super fan. He's also pretty athletic where he was an athlete in college and through that he's very capable of winning comps as well, which I, I think could surprise some people. So I think Quinn is definitely one of the more interesting people here where I can very well see him being like this Andy Heron style player, someone that's able to really navigate the game and work circles around a lot of this cast or there's someone that is just able to flame out early on due to them being seen as kind of sketchy and someone who is very clearly meant to be this quote unquote perfect big brother player. And I think considering that we just saw Corey last season, someone who also kind of came off as a bit sketchy early on, but was able to have a deep run within him. I could also see that working against Quinn as well. So again, I feel like Quinn is someone who I'm definitely going to be rooting for coming into the season, but it would not shock me at all if he ends up being an early boot due to his archetype but I feel like with the upside there I do have him here at number five now moving on to number four and these are my main contenders coming into this season now obviously there's plenty of room for these people to flame out early on as I'll be getting into but I feel like these are the four people who I feel pretty good about coming into this season but number four, probably the person I feel the least confident about of these four is Matt. And I think on paper, Matt kind of fits this bro -y archetype that you would expect to do well in Big Brother, someone who very easily fits within the majority alliance here, but is also someone who seems to be pretty aware about his like strengths and weaknesses, where he talks about how one of his issues is that people tend to see him at first as his douche and someone who is a meathead that doesn't really have much going on. While at the same time, he's someone who talks about getting along well with older people and how he wants to come off as someone that needs like a parental figure on the show. So I feel like that'll definitely work well to a saver as well. I feel like he's someone who is, again, pretty physical, someone that can definitely win a lot of competitions. And I think on paper, someone you would expect to do pretty well in Big Brother. Now, I think at the same time, there's some issues to point out here. Like for one, he talks about not wanting them into first HOH, which while the last couple seasons haven't produced the best first HOHs, I do feel like winning the first HOH is still something you at least want to do as it's a valuable opportunity to set up the power structure and really set the tone for the season. So I feel like Matt not wanting to win that is kind of a red flag here. He also admits that he's kind of a loud mouth and that he'll have to hold himself back, which again, good that he recognizes that. But I feel like with the game like Big Brother, it really just 
exposes you. And I feel like over time, I feel like it'll become more and more difficult to hold that back. And again, I also question, that's why I like Matt and I think he'll do pretty well in the season. I feel like the top three are people I feel a bit more confident about at the moment, which is why he's here number four. Now moving on to number three, and we have someone who is kind of similar to Matt in that they kind of have some good and bad things going for them, but it's still someone who has plenty of upside, but we do have Tucker. And I'm a bit surprised Tucker is as high as coming into it. I was expecting him to be someone like Brent from BB23 or Pooch from BB24, someone who kind of makes himself a target early on, someone who is pretty overconfident about his abilities in the game and someone who is just kind of flaming out at the end of the day. And I feel like Tucker very much has that potential within him. I found myself pretty surprised by his interview where he turns out to be a pretty well-rounded person where he talks about how growing up he has all these experiences, how he was both a bully and someone who was bullied. He's someone who did a lot of sports in high school, but also someone that did theater. While at the same time, he does talk about past seasons of the show, like how he wants to play more like Ian compared to Dan or Brett, which is kind of a surprising when you think about it. And while I think he has similar issues to Matt in the sense that he admits himself to being a pretty big personality and that he has to kind of tone it down and be a bit more under the radar, I feel like he has the introspection within him to recognize his faults and to sort of play off that a bit. And I feel like he's a bit more sociable compared to Matt, where I feel like Matt can come off as a bit awkward at points. I think Tucker is someone who can genuinely bond with a decent amount of the house and is someone who I feel like could do pretty well because of that. Now, at the end of the day, he still has that potential to be like a Brent or a Pooch, someone who is targeted early on due to him being like perceived as this douche. But I feel like Tucker is someone who definitely has been more upside than I was expecting coming into it which is why he's here at number three. Now moving on to number two, and I wasn't expecting this person to be in number two, and to be fair, this could end up being a mistake, but number two, I did decide to go with Chelsea, and the main reason I went with Chelsea here is she does talk about being a pretty massive super fan. She's been a fan of the show for years. She's been applying for a while, and she's someone who I think understands the game a bit better than other people. I feel like she's definitely someone who will definitely be one of the more active players around while not being as overbearing compared to someone like a Brooklyn, for instance. So I feel like those things will definitely work out to Chelsea's favor. Now, at the same time, I could see her overplaying and could make herself a target early on, as we kind of saw with Kirsten from last season, even though Kirsten did get kind of unlucky there as well. But I feel like in the absence of early game twists that limit the options for week one, I feel like someone like a Chelsea will have a bit more runway to work with and really allow herself to ingratiate herself within the majority alliance while still having the game knowledge to advance herself deeper into the game. So I feel like those things are definitely a big reason why I have her this on the list and someone who I do see as a contender coming into it. But I feel like the number one person is someone who is I mean, be more of a safer pick as I tend to go with Big Brother a lot of times, which is why she's here at number two. And now at number one, my winner pick going into Big Brother 26 is Cam. And Cam is someone who admittedly is not as big of a super fan compared to Chelsea and certain other people in this cast and very similar to the other people in this season. We'll very much have to see how well he actually does socially and strategically. But I feel like on the surface, at least Cam is someone who should do pretty well on a season like this, where he talks plenty of bits about his strategy coming in, where he wants to build this big alliance, but still wants to work with the older people. He talks about how he wants to use the older people like Angela and Kenny as potential shields which I think is an interesting idea, not entirely sure how effective it will be, but I feel like he's someone who is your pretty prototypical big brother player, someone who will definitely get along with a decent amount of people, someone who will definitely be included in the majority of lines early on, someone who will very well be in a decent position early on in the game. And while I think he's relying a bit too much on the meta of having this big power structure that's relying on winning a whole bunch of competitions, and I'm not entirely sure how he would do in a situation where someone outside of his alliance was winning competitions or there's a more dynamic house. I feel like Cam is someone who, at least on paper, is someone who should be set up pretty well coming into the season. I feel like he's probably the least likely person to be targeted in week one, though if that ends up not being the case, you can definitely refer back to this video here. But I feel like Cam is someone who, again, based on the very limited information we currently have, I feel like Cam is probably one of the people I can most easily see doing well early on and someone who definitely has plenty of upside to win a bunch of competitions, someone who is very capable in all three facets of the game. And while I am very open to being proven wrong here, I feel like based on the information we currently have, I feel like Cam is probably the safest pick that I'm gonna go with here, which is why he is here at number one. And there we go, that would do it for this week's video. If you like this content, be sure to like and subscribe, really hot to with the channel. 
Now, next week, once the season is underway, I'll be doing another power ranking, seeing how these people are actually doing and seeing how well a lot of these takes have aged. So stay tuned for that. I'm on Patreon as well as YouTube membership. So if you want to consider supporting the channel, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. And you can also join the Discord server by also clicking the link in the description. There's a lot of stuff coming your way. But for now, that is the video. See ya.